whenever I have the opportunity to teach first thing in the morning, I want to wake you guys up. So moving chairs back to seat. Okay? So, first thing I want you to do, stand up, please. Yeah. So you're going to do this a few times. Sit down. <laughs> Put your hands on top of your head. Stand up. <laughs> I saw it. You'll, you'll, you'll learn about this in a second. Sit down. Lift one leg up. Stand up. Oh, a little harder, right? Sit down. I normally make people do both sides. The population we're about to talk to you about today is 55 and up. As hard as it was for you to stand up on one leg, that's how hard it is for some of these people to stand up without using the arms of their chairs. So when you went like this, and I have a room of seniors, they look at me and go, no, 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 no. I'm not standing up, are you kidding? But before you start, I want to thank Alan and Rachel. It is an absolute honor to be up here today to speak about something I'm very passionate about. Um, I think and I hope that you guys are going to learn a little bit about a market that you might not be tapping into. First thing, what do you think of when you think of older people? Okay, what is that age group for you? You think walkers, wheelchairs, sickness? Or we're trainers in the room, so we might think a little differently. This is our 68-year-old bodybuilder. This guy, he's a badass. These guys, they're just living an active lifestyle. This is how people want to spend their later years in my world. Mature market, they're the baby boomers, 1946 to 1964. Currently ages 50 to 68. Think about that for a second, 50 to 68. Think about how many of those people you have in your gym right now, okay? There are 76, depending on some census numbers, to 79 million people in this market, and I'm gonna show you that they are very underserved. For the next 18 years, every day, we'll have 10,000 more people added to that 79 million. That's a lot of people between 50 and 68. Let's define it. Anybody born before 1929, they're the World, one, World War I, World War II people. They're kind of leaving us slowly but surely. Then we've got our young olds. These are people who lived through the Depression. They're declining in health. We've got the baby boomers, Korean War, Vietnam War, people I just talked about, and then the baby busters, they're 35 to 49. You probably have a fair number of those people in your gym. But now they have to be recategorized. We got the elite people. Those are the ones who are in the senior Olympics. Those are the ones that you definitely see in your gym if you have them. Then there's the physically fit. Again, also people who are taking fitness seriously. The independents, they're the ones who think that when you play tennis, play golf, when you walk the dog, when you garden, that's how they're getting their exercise. Frail independents are not people we're going to be spending a lot of time on today because they're the people who need help living. They're the people who need to move in with their kids, they need to have active care. We're gonna, we're gonna focus on the independents today because there's a lot of those. But why do you wanna listen to me? What's important about that? Well, I've been 25 years in the industry so I'm almost as old as hell. Uh, we went to Maryland. I'm a relationship extrovert, uh, those of you who know me. Um, my average age client is 48.7, so I have a lot of these people in my gym. My first gym was in D.C., where I, and then I moved to, uh, play with, uh, to work with PGA Tour players. I had two national championships, uh, and I trained President Bush. And while I was training with him, he would constantly send me letters. Here's our boy. So you can have the kind of diffidence that I have the right strategy for you. <laughs> What do you see? You see active people in their, what we like to call their third act. But this is not off of a website. These are my actual clients. We got monkey bars in the gym. We're doing hurdles, we're boxing. They like to do this stuff. How do most baby boomers remember exercise? Well, as we go through, for those of you who are old enough, we got a little Christian Brinkley, little Jake, Jane, Olivia. That boy. <laughs> Jacqueline, but there was somebody else in this time frame who was teaching. Our very own Rachel Cox. <laughs> she 
<laughs> Some are a little older, not you guys, but they're going to remember it like this. Now, how cool would it be to have that treadmill in your gym? Non motorized, never breaks. Just picture you got Indian clubs. How cool is that? And then, you know, those like belts that move? I had one. Kelly made me get rich. <laughs> Drove me crazy. Most trainers at best think the market looks like this. Now these are people that when you Google it, this is what you see for marketing, okay? Not bad, right? Well, these are my people. Nancy up there in the top left is over 60. She's done every obstacle course we've ever done. Don hired us to uh, get him up Mount Kilimanjaro. Gentleman over here, he's a nationally ranked tennis player. Barbara is 80 years old. She's pushing that sled like there's no tomorrow and is absolutely thrilled that she's out driving her friends by 20 yards. And Marge, that's Kelly's mom. She's a resident clown. We love having Marge with them. <laughs> Most of them see themselves like this, though. If you can't read it, fitness experts say your muscles need plenty of rest between workouts. The doctor says your last workout was 70 years ago. <laughs> They're not doing a lot. They're afraid. Why should we focus on them? It's the perfect storm. You'll see why. This is what's currently offered. Silver sneakers, fit after 50. You might have somebody in your town who's doing something similar. We all know, at least if you pay attention to the markets, these things are not serving them very well. Most of silver sneakers is being done in a chair with one pound weights. We know that's not gonna help them move better, feel better, perform better, right? So there are currently no sexy, fun, or interesting options for our lovely third act people. The real problem is, and I want you to pay attention to this, when people from this demographic think about fitness, this is what marketing is showing them. We got a couple guys jumping on a tire. We got some lunatic balancing on a kettlebell on one foot upside down. That badass up there. We got, what is it, Alex, who walked into a gym with a motorcycle and flames in the front. Are these people gonna walk in and go, this is the gym for me? 71% of the people are not feeling like they are being advertised and marketed to correctly, and we are alienating 79 million people. Think about your own marketing right now. What is on, what is primarily on your website, on your flyers, when they walk in your gym? If it's not something that you think would be friendly to these people, they're turning around or never actually even walking in your gym. Now, you might want the market with the motorcycles in the place. That might be what you want. Just know that you're giving up a huge percentage of the population. So what's wrong with this? You might not be able to see it. I just want you to look at the colors and I'm going to explain. All the colors in blue are what exercises are doing. And the blue ones represent 18 to 54. The red, we'll use red, it could be pink, uh, is 55 and older. Now, the class categories are yoga, Pilates, dance, Zumba, weight training, strength training, um, all, the, all the different activities we have in our gym. There's not a lot of red on the board. There's not a lot of red on the board because we're failing as an industry to get these people in our gyms. This is a crime. This is what your marketing should look like. Older people, active, having fun. Make sense? What makes this demographic interesting? I'm going to come back to the picture in a second, but I will, you know, write this down if you really want to drive this point home. Starting in 2016, just three months from now, every eight seconds someone's going to turn 70. Now we hear 40 is the new 30 and 50 is the new 40. I'm telling you right now, we have 70 year olds who are thinking and actively trying to say, I am going to live over 100 years old. Studies show that we, as professionals, can train the body so that it will last longer than the brain. Think about that for a second. People are going to have problems with brain function before they have problems with body function if we do our job. Okay? So, this group's getting bigger. By 2030, okay, 15 years from now, there'll be 87 million people over 65 plus. That's a huge market, guys. Huge. There's very little research done on that. 
the baby boomer generation, they came around quick. So they're aging quickly, but nobody's studying them. Imagine if you start to do that, what you could do for this industry. Now let's look at the picture for a second. How about being, I don't know, you want to call them 70? Maybe 75? How about that each lot? Anybody want their clients to get in that position? What is he thinking? He's not thinking, damn, that's a good deep squat. He's thinking, I'm hanging out with my grandkids. That's what they want to do. But we'll go over that in a few minutes. They're talking about quality of life. They want to make, remain injury free. They want to travel. They want to play with their grandkids. They want to do stuff. Let's talk about this market for a second. <clears throat> Millennials, 35 to 45, this group. Probably a lot of people in your gym, right? Sometimes they leave for financial reasons. Why? Well, they got a mortgage, two cars, want to put their kids through private school, they're saving up for a college education. What do these guys have? All that money, but they don't have any of those responsibilities. They want to spend it on fit. They want to spend it on longevity. So I want to tell you a quick story. Betsy and Norm, they are 75 and 76 respectively. They have saved up, they travel a lot, but they were asked to go on a trip to Alaska. Now, Everyone thinks, yeah, you're going to get on a cruise, blah, 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 blah. Well, the people that they were going with wanted to hike when they got to Alaska. Betsy and Norm don't hike. They don't go over rocks. But they wanted to be included in the group. It was three miles each way. It was going to be an all-day meal. So they came to me and they said, let's start walking, let's start strength training, let's start doing all this stuff. But I started to think about it around week four. And I asked the question, how are you getting off of the boat to go to the hike? And they're going to have to get in one of those Zodiac, Kodiak things. Well, we spent the next three weeks with a bench just getting over the bench because they couldn't do that when they first got to. A lot of these people can't get up and down off the floor. Think about that for a second. You've eliminated a huge arsenal from your library. So how does that story end? The minute they got into port, Got a text from him right away, Bobby, we made it there first. We, we were the only people not to fall in the Kodiak, and we had the best time because we were prepared. So we're affecting their quality of life and their ability to travel, which they now have the money to do, and that's how they want to spend their money. That makes sense? Group yes? Yes. Perfect. So where do baby boomers get most of their information? Where do you think that is? Any guesses? Newspaper. Newspaper, that's a good guess. Any other guesses? Uh, this lovely guy. Yes. News. That's our doctor. Oh. That's it. Here's the deal, guys. I had a couple medical students that I've been training recently. And I decided, you know, while they're in there, let me find out. So I did a little digging. 51% of, uh, of the people who go to medical school have Absolutely no instruction on fitness and health. None. No coursework. No one week class. No even half day seminar. 21% are only offered one. 82% don't require their medical students to learn anything about health and fitness. Zero. Nada. Nothing. And this is where that group is getting their information from a guy like that. He is just a picture out, isn't he? <laughs> so why should you care? <laughs> Well, as you start to learn about this market, I'll explain the picture on the left. We're going to lose 30% of our muscle between the ages of 30 and 70 if we don't actively change that. Okay? It's just, just life. It's just what the body does. 99% of the people in this demographic know, I need to get off my ass. I need to do something. I need to start moving. But only 16% of them take action. That's that elite in those people who are in your gym now. Picture is a 40 year old triathlete. Bottom picture, oh, hang on, it's a cross section of a muscle fiber of a 40 year old triathlete. The bottom one is a 70 year old triathlete. The middle one is a 74 year old sedentary man. That's what your muscle fibers look like if you do not help these people. So, one in three adults age 65 and older have a fall each year. Look at these numbers. There are 2.5 million emergency room visits that come from a fall. $34 billion of healthcare is being dealt with with 
fault. Now, I don't know if you've ever dealt with any of this population. Um, if you decide that these are people you want to work with, you're definitely going to have to sharpen your saw a little bit. You're going to have to learn a little bit more about medications and how they interact with the body. You're going to have to learn about hip replacements, knee replacements, massive shoulder changes, because you don't get to be 55, 60, 70 years old without banging yourself up a little bit. So all of your regressions are going to become very important when you start to train this group. But think about this one. So I tell the story, Kelly's grandmother was 90, 94. This woman was fit, she moved around, she was out, you know, in, in Arizona you get to be very active if you're in the older population. She fell. She broke her head. 50% of the people who break their hip die within six weeks. If she had not fallen, she'd probably still be here today because they can't survive a fall and a broken hip. Had we, had we worked on her balance a little bit more, had we made her a little bit less wobbly, probably wouldn't have fallen, probably would still be here today. These are the kind of things that you need to be thinking about. It's not just the body, it's the brain. Okay, on the left side, this is, this is a healthy brain. On the right side, this is a brain that has not been taken care of, no blood flow, no stimulation. Yes, we're talking about things like, you know, lumosity and Sudoku and, and all that stuff, but we're also talking about activity from working out. So what's in it for them? This is the touchiest clicker I've ever had. <laughs> Um, what's in it for them? What do older people want from you? If you're going to take this on, if, these is, if this group of people are interesting to you, they don't want to be treated like an old person. There is nothing funnier than I have a group on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon listening to them tell jokes and talk about sex. There is nothing funnier. And they do it every Tuesday and Thursday. Like a bunch of dirty old men. They want to build a relationship. Elias has talked about selling. This is a whole new category of selling, guys, because they're gonna, you're going to sit down and you're going to say, so, why are you here? Get comfortable, because it's going to be a 20-minute, you're not going to get anything in. <laughs> well, you know, my grandkids are just sort of getting around, and you know, uh, I really, you know, my, my golf group is not as good as it used to be. The guys are my favorite. Well, you know, back when I was in college, I could throw the ball 198 yards. <laughs> <laughs> they want to feel alive. They want to feel young. These, it's a lot different. You'll see. Check this out. They want to keep functional, active, and independent. Once these people start getting above a certain age, now they're worried that they're going to be forced to move out. That their kids are going to say, Mom, Dad, you can't be alone anymore. You can't live by yourself. We're going to have to put you someplace. That's a very real conversation that these people are having in their head. And you can help them. Because if their kids aren't worried, and they're not worried, we don't have a problem. Uh, Danny Tucons, he's in deep shit because we need a clean, modern, safe facility. He already told us that they, he doesn't wear pants there, and they're not going to like that at all. <laughs> uh, but if you have a gym, and there's chalk everywhere, and there's kettlebells everywhere, they worry about falling. They worry about dark. They worry about trip hazards. So you gotta do that. And you guys gotta be smart. You guys have to learn how to work with these people. You already have skills, you already know how to train. You just have to, as I said before, sharpen your saw a little bit. Because they have different needs. And here's the thing, I talked about this, we want to be their third place. For some people in this population, this is the only time that they're gonna get out of that day. They're gonna come to you, they're gonna work out, and then they're going home. That's it. So, in this particular instance, you want to make it fun, you want to make them have a good time, you want to make that outing worth it so that they want to do it regularly. What's in it for you? They are the number one demographic in spending power. These people have the money, they want to spend the money. They want to spend it on this. They're, they have four trillion dollars worth of spending. This is the first generation that is inheriting large sums of money from their parents. They want to do something with it. They want to travel. 